Um, so without further ado, we're going to go on with uh, Professor uh, in, in lieu of uh, Department Chair Don Wynn, we do have uh, Professor Via Vicencio uh, presenting to us on emergency medical technician. And we will have a PowerPoint for that uh, shortly pulled up. So um, thanks again for, for your patience and following along with us. I hope the weather has subsided and uh, we looks like we might be able to go on with 100% power, hopefully, knock on wood. Hi, Stephen. I don't have a PowerPoint for you. Do you want me to make you a co-host? Um, yes, if you would, and I can just share mine. Thank you. I was going to ask. And also, I want to introduce uh, Professor Nea Hoffman is here also. She's going to be co-hosting with me. Um, I can I can do the PowerPoint if you just want to make me the presenter. But uh, this is Nea. Let, let her introduce herself. Hi there. My name is Nea Hoffman. I um was an EMT student at ACC many years ago, went on through the paramedic program, worked in the field for several years, and then came back to ACC to teach. So I teach in the paramedic program, and also I handle the high school EMT class. So I will be your lead instructor. Um, you may have another instructor as well. Usually I have Drew help me out. He's not here tonight, but I'm super excited to show you guys what we're all about. So it's good to have everybody. So I'm Steven and I serve as the EMT coordinator. So I oversee all the different EMT classes that we teach in this uh, Health Science Academy being one of them. So, um, and that's kind of a good point to start with is that it's, it's something I want everybody to understand that the Health Science Academy course, um, we were, we're putting you in that same college class we're putting all of our other college students in. And it's really important that you understand um, that you're gonna be held to those same standards. And so that's what we want to talk to today about to kind of present our program, let you know a little bit about what we do and how much fun we have. So uh, we're going to go ahead and get started. And I'm going to mute my screen here or blank my screen out and I'm going to share it so you can see and uh, hopefully you can hear I'm going to have a video also. Let's see in just a second you should be able to see what um, I'm seeing, All right. So the emergency medical services professions program, we're actually part of an associate's degree program where you're able to get not just an EMT certificate, but you can actually continue on to our program to become a paramedic. And a lot of people don't really understand the differences between EMTs and paramedics. So I thought we would start there. Not everybody that drives an ambulance um, has the same certification, and we all have different accountability. We have the same accountability and responsibility for our patients, but we all have different capabilities. So you might notice when you're out and about, or if you ever stop at the scene of an accident and you see the, the uniforms, these responders all have different patches, and those patches actually symbolize their level of certification. And the certification that we're offering to the Health Science Academy is actually the second level of a series of four different levels of pre-hospital emergency medicine. So that means that um, you're able to practice as a certified professional healthcare provider outside, in the, outside of a hospital setting and take care of individuals in car accidents and if they have problems at the mall or if they're delivering a baby somewhere, you get to take care of their problems and also um, a system not just with trauma, but also with medical things, like if you have an asthma attack somewhere, if you have an anaphylactic reaction. So we actually start you off at the second level, which is called the emergency medical technician. So EMT is a one semester class. And then from there, you can advance to advanced EMT, and then you can go to the paramedic level. So we're gonna walk you through all of those different levels, but we're gonna start with the one that the Health Science Academy uh, we'll introduce you. So the biggest difference here is what do we do? What separates EMS from pretty much all the other healthcare professionals? And the biggest difference is what we do and where we practice. So what we do is we take care of emergencies and we also take care of non-life-threatening emergencies, but we do this at the Jiffy Loop and at Dillard's and at Walmart and Home Depot. We do these in the most unusual places because people have emergencies everywhere. <clears throat> so this is our office. It's a little different than pretty much any other part of medicine out there. And that's what attracted me. I was an EMT, uh, 
actually right around the age of 18 is actually when I first started to get my certification. And I, obviously I've stayed ever since. I've loved it and advanced off to paramedic. But this is what attracted me right here. It's not just the trauma, but the fact that I'm able to go outside and go to somebody's bedroom or somebody's living room or their kitchen and make a really bad day much better for them. I want to improve their, their outcomes and, and give them the best possible chance of survival, regardless of whatever condition they have. So when you take our class, you're going to be sitting through 46 chapters of material because you have to be responsible for knowing everything about every possible emergency there is out there. Okay, so this is kind of the standard medical community. You don't think about hospitals and clinics and doctor's offices. So, um, and we, we do communicate and work very well with these professionals. We transport everybody there, but you, you have to understand when you're working as a physician or a PA or a nurse or a tech, all the patients come in and they're on a stretcher four feet high, they're all covered up and they all kind of look the same. So we get to see them where we find them in that position and, and how uh, whatever presentation, whatever the car looks like, they got in an accident. And it's our responsibility to take that information and relay it to the healthcare providers in the hospital so that continuity of care will continue. So let's look a little bit more about the structure. So I said that the EMT is the second level and you'll start there. It's a one semester program. And I'll talk a little bit about those requirements in a bit of, of the age requirements for the class itself. But once you finish that program, you will then get to advance to the next semester if you choose. And it's actually two additional semesters beyond that and you become an advanced EMT. So let's start with the one that um, the Health Science Academy class offers. The EMT, we're going to be through a 16 week class and you're going to go through a series of a variety of different types of education. We're gonna start you in, in one of four modules. The first one is called Preparatory. And there you're gonna learn how to um, learn the language of medicine and you're going to learn about the medical legal aspects so you're going to understand things about the good samaritan law and about negligence and, and things called misfeasance and malfeasance you're going to really understand what the limits are what you can do as, a, as an outside provider and how you work under a physician's license so a lot of that and we're also going to teach you about patient care and how to assess patients whether they're one year old or 100 years old whether they're male or female whether they have a paper cut or they've got an amputation, regardless of the problem, we're gonna be able to take care of it for them. And you get all of that in this very first semester. And in a bit, we'll talk about job opportunities and kind of the pay that you expect as well. And then after that, we're, we'll spend a second module. Um, so after this preparatory module, we're gonna go into a second module that's all about trauma. So everything you can imagine from burns, to um, musculoskeletal trauma and soft tissue injuries and chest and abdominal injuries, head injuries, spine injuries, everything you can imagine we'll discuss in the trauma module. And then we're gonna move you into the medical module, which is one of my favorites. And here we're gonna talk about things like what shock is and well, part of that will be in the trauma, but um, different kinds of medical shocks and things like respiratory issues. So things like we're seeing now COVID and asthma and, chronic bronchitis and um, different types of congestive heart failures and all kinds of cardiovascular emergencies and strokes and seizures and diabetic emergencies and severe allergic reactions and everything, even snake bites and bee stings. So all of that is going to be covered in the medical module. And then we're going to final uh, finish off with something called the special operations module and special patients. And here's where you get to talk to pediatric patients, you get to learn how to work with geriatric patients, you get to learn to deal with psychiatric patients, uh, you're going to learn how to deliver a baby, that's also one of my favorite sections. You'll be um, able to work with uh, vets who come back from wartime, and also the operations component of that module has to do with things like um, hazardous materials and weapons of mass destruction, and triage, so all of the, the global components when you have mass casualty. So that's what the program looks like. We're gonna cover all of that material in 16 weeks. Uh, and then from there, if you're wanting, you can continue on to the advanced EMT. And this is an additional two semesters. And in the advanced EMT, you're gonna to learn to, to, be, to do some more invasive things like start IVs and do phlebotomy 
and you'll learn about advanced airway and you'll get a whole lot of trauma, a whole semester on trauma, much more than what you get at the EMT level. And then if you wanna round it out and become a paramedic, it's gonna be an additional three semesters beyond that. And you will get to do cardiology and work with the defibrillators and do things like pacing with all sorts of different kinds of electricity. We're gonna teach you about 60 to 70 different medications that you're gonna be able to administer. And you're gonna to get to do much more advanced airways. Like you see in this picture here, they're doing a, an airway through the neck. And throughout all of these semesters, you're gonna be with preceptors, like you see on the bottom right. You're gonna be with these preceptors that are gonna have you do everything. So these are clinicals where you jump in and you run the call. And same thing with EMT, this, this semester that in the Health Science Academy, you're going to be working with these paramedics, and they're going to be letting you do all the work. They're, they're not going to make you, they're not going to hurt anybody, but they're going to allow you to practice and get better at it. So I'm going to turn it over to Naya here, and she's going to talk a little bit about some of the career paths that you might expect to find in EMS. Are you there, Naya? We there we go. Yeah, it will let me unmute. <laughs> All right. um, well, if you just click through, I'll talk about each sure. of them. Oh, yeah, this is fun. All right. So check it out. We've got the ambulance down here and we also have a helicopter. Uh, generally not as an EMT will you end up on a helicopter, but starting out at the EMT level, you can get a job on an ambulance transporting patients. Uh, in a 911 service, you can also get a job on an ambulance where you just do transport. So you would be taking patients to, you know, from their house to a doctor's appointment or from a nursing home to a doctor's appointment and then back to the place that they live. You can also get a job as a tech uh, in many of the hospitals around here. We've had several of our EMT students who once they got their EMT certification, moved on into the paramedic program. And after the very first semester of the paramedic program, where we teach you how to do IVs, they were then approved to do IVs in their, um, in their hospitals where they were working just as techs. So it's a really exciting way to um, learn and grow in the field while you're already working and getting paid. Um, do we have more on the list there? Um yeah, well, can, okay. Um, yeah, you can just talk about like the paramedic to RN programs. Yeah. So um, in addition to being able to work throughout your career in the paramedic program and just getting a job right out of the EMT program, which is pretty impressive on its own, a starting EMT can get a job on an ambulance in Austin, Travis County. And I want to say they start around $50,000 a year. That's after a one semester class. And then you can continue on in the program. Uh, once you've made it through the paramedic program, which is about uh, two years is what it takes. It's a five semester program once you've had your EMT, where you get tons and tons of experience, lots of time on the ambulance. We do clinicals in the communications department with the police department. Um, you'll work in labor and delivery. You'll go to clinicals in the emergency room all of that on top of your write out. So you have lots of experience, lots of practice. It gets really in depth. And then when you're finished with your EMT and then paramedic, you can go on to the nursing program uh, at ACC. We have something called the mobility track, which is only a one-year program. And we don't offer that the other way. So you can't go through the nursing program and then come to a one-year paramedic. Paramedic is gonna take you two years no matter what. So the really nice thing is, ACC also offers a four-year degree plan um, for RN, so you can actually get your bachelor's in nursing. So that could mean you could finish your EMT while you're still in high school. Within the next two years, have your paramedic. One year after that, have your RN. And then one year or an, a year and a half, you can do a couple of different tracks. After that, you could have your bachelor's in nursing. So that would give you multiple certifications as well as an associate's and a bachelor's degree, which makes you incredibly marketable. And the nice thing about being a paramedic 
or a paramedic and an RN is it's really easy to get a job on a helicopter after that because they really, really like it when you have those multiple certs. And that also allows you to move throughout the country because these are national certifications and makes you pretty valuable. I have a couple of friends who are uh, paramedics and also travel nurses. So right now they're currently in Alaska working, but they've traveled all over working. So it really, really opens um, a whole world up for you. I have a former high school student who was in my very first uh, high school health sciences academy EMT class who is applying uh, for the nursing program now. So I'm, I've been really impressed with the kids I've had come through and it just gives you a lot of different opportunities. Um, EMT is also one of the things that is required if you want to be a firefighter. So a lot of people will get their EMT and then continue on into fire, firefighting. Um, you can get jobs at nursing homes. You can get jobs, um, let's see, where else? You can get jobs um, working in labs, taking, uh, drawing blood, just like the phlebotomists do. You can also do that uh, after you've gone through portions of the paramedic program to learn all the IV skills. So it's pretty exciting. Um, one other thing I'll mention about the paramedic program, once you've completed EMT, is we now have a specimen lab as well as an advanced airway lab. So you'll get to go work with cadavers where you will uh, be able to actually work on actual um, bodies and try out different airways. And then after that, you are able to go into operating rooms and actually drop tubes on patients who are going into surgery. So it's a really, really exciting um, career path that really has a very, very broad range. So I highly, highly recommend it, of course. <laughs> and Naya did mention this, but I wanna reiterate, um, going back to the EMT portion, just the one semester that you would be doing as part of your uh, academy, just that one semester, if you get hired on with places like Austin, Travis County, they have, um, you can be a field medic. So you can actually be an EMT on the ambulance uh, doing 911 response, or you can also do what they call a communications medic. And you work as the medical dispatcher. So when somebody needs 911 and they pick up the phone and they need an ambulance, you're actually talking to an EMT or paramedic, but oftentimes they're just, they're EMTs and they're, they're the ones that can give them medical guidance through the phone while they're dispatching the ambulance. So if you can multitask and you like computers and you like kind of the latest state of the art, uh, working with um, controlling all the ambulances across the city, you can consider EMS communications as a job. And it just takes this one semester course to do that. So there are so many different opportunities, but it all starts with this EMT. Okay, so let's move on to this next slide. If I can get it to advance here. So I wanna talk a little bit more about the class itself. Not only do we have the didactic portion that I kind of went through with the different modules, but we also have lab. So in lab, we get to practice all the things that we learn about in a textbook. And you're gonna be practicing all kinds of different skills, including CPR and airway skills. And you're gonna to learn to splint and you're gonna learn to put tourniquets on and um, you're gonna do wound packing for, for bullets and, and gunshot wounds. You're going to um, do med all sorts of different medication administration. So we keep you busy with hands-on. So if you're a very hands-on person and you just want to get there and do it, this is the program for you. We, um, we really are very interactive with getting the, the lab portion to let you practice what you're learning. And then you can test out those skills with real patients in the clinicals. So when we send you out to clinical, you're doing rotations in the ERs. You're doing rotations in labor and delivery. We put you on the ambulances. So we want to, and we also do communication clinics. Now, right now, some of those are suspended because of COVID, but by next spring, we fully expect all these to be fully open again. And, uh, but yeah, so we put you out there so you can see what is it going to be like to be a communications medic? What is it like to work in obstetrics or deliver babies and um, work in the ER? Because we do, you can actually work in the ER as a, as a tech with the EMT, like Nate was saying, where you can be a paramedic and work as a a paramedic right next to a nurse as well. So there are these opportunities to work in hospital if you think an ambulance is not necessarily for you. Okay, so we talked about the class in the lab, we talked about the clinicals, the field expectations. These can kind of vary depending on these jobs that they had mentioned. Most of it is shift work. So you're looking at maybe like working 24 on, but then you have 48 hours off, or sometimes you work two days or 
and you get off three or four days. So there's a variety of different types of shift schedules. In Austin, some of the busy trucks that are downtown are 12 hour shifts. So you, you work 12 hours on, 12 hours off, or, or you know, there's a, so many different types of schedules and you get to work with partners and, and be with them for actually many, many years. So you get to know them really well. Okay, I'm advancing the slide here. I'm gonna talk a little bit about the facilities. And um, to do this, I'm actually going to share a video. So let's show you the video. And then we'll come back and talk a little bit more. Okay, so I'm going to stop sharing the screen now. So um, I put my video back on. And I just want to conclude with a few more things about the program. Um, just to let you guys know that when you complete this one semester course, you are going to be receiving two certificates. You're going to get a, um, you're eligible for national registry certification. So you'll be an EMT pretty much in almost all 50 states. They almost all participate. So if you decide to move to another state, you just take that with you and you can get a state certification in pretty much any other state. 
and then you'll be eligible for your state certification for Texas, and you have to have that to work. And um, very similar requirements as you as we discussed previously um, in the pharmacy tech. So the health science requirements are pretty similar. We do require a BLS for healthcare provider CPR class that you take first as a prerequisite. Uh, but and also you have to be 18 when you start your clinical. So not necessarily at the start of class, but for the ERs in particular, you must be 18 to, to begin your clinical rotations in the ER. Uh, besides that, you will uh, you do need to have a social security number. For, for EMS, the state will allow a TIN number, which is a, a tax ID number. So if you, if you have that instead, the state will allow certification for it, but you need to have one or the other. So you need to be, you need to be eligible to work. That's how the state looks at it. And besides that, the immunizations, we do have a few um, immunization requirements and we have handouts for this as well. So I won't take the time right now to go through those, but we do have some very specific immunization requirements, the same, um, criminal background check and the same uh, drug screen that was discussed earlier and health insurance as well. So that pretty much covers the application process, but if you have any questions at all, we're gonna open it up for questions unless Ania has anything you'd like to add, but um, any questions at all, please feel free to reach out to your contacts and they'll reach out to Nea and I and we can get those questions answered. So we look forward to seeing you guys. And Nea, is there anything else you'd like to mention? Well, I was just going to say that all of those fun skills that you guys saw in the video, those are all EMT skills. Everything in that was from an EMT class. So you get to learn how to ventilate patients. You get to learn how to put on oxygen. Of course, there's CPR, but you learn a whole bunch of different things, bandaging, splinting, how to put people on um, backboards, how to do a good full assessment. Um, there's just so many fun skills that you get to do in addition to learning all the good experience uh, and, and anatomy and physiology and just how the body works. And I think one of the most valuable things for the EMT class, which I really feel like this should be given in high schools for everyone, because the best thing that you learn is you learn how to be calm in a stressful situation. So even when everybody else around you is freaking out, you're like, I know what to do in an emergency and I can be cool. And, and it is just a really practical life skill in addition to the fact that it gives you the opportunity to actually help people. So I think it's a really, really exciting uh, thing to do. And to be able to get it while you're in high school is amazing. So big, big head start that way.